A long time ago, we'd often use big, bulky cables to connect devices to computers. We call those cables parallel cables, and we don't really use those anymore. No, these days, we often use serial cables, such as USB, to connect things to a computer. But what exactly is the difference between a parallel and a serial connection? And why do we have such a strong preference for serial cables? Let's say we have two points. We have a sender, who has a bunch of data that needs to be sent, and a recipient, who's waiting for this data to arrive. And let's say the data is just one character, an A, right? and a lowercase a. Now, the lowercase a translated into binaries of zeros and ones is this. So, now the question is, how are we going to get this bunch of zeros and ones over to the other side? Let's first take a look at how the serial connection would do it. A serial connection is just one wire. Just one, just one wire for the data transmission, nothing else. This means that you're just going to signal this a, this binary code, through it, kind of like Morse code. So the 1 will be on, that will be a signal, and the 0 will be nothing, will be off. And you do this at a specific rate, so maybe every second, which means the recipient or the receiver will be listening every second, and if we get something, he'll know it's, it's a 1, and if he doesn't get anything, it's a 0. All right. This means with 8 bits, because that's what the A is, it's 8 zeros and 1s, it's going to take 8 seconds to transfer this character. So we can speed up the process by just increasing the frequency, increasing the amount of bits we send. So maybe we do it every half a second or every quarter of a second, right? That way we can speed up the amount of bits that gets transferred and that's great because speed, that's what this is all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Now let's see how a parallel connection does it. A parallel connection is actually very clever, because what it might just say is, well, you know, we've got an A that needs to be transferred, which is 8 bits of data. We might as well just use 8 wires for transferring each bit. So it will just transfer the whole thing in just one cycle, and it will totally beat the serial connection in this case. You see that? It just wins, right? Because it can send so much stuff at the same time. So in a purely theoretical world, a parallel connection just beats a serial connection. Always. Here's the problem. In the real world, it doesn't. And that's because of the following reason. If you're a designer or an engineer and you want to make a faster serial connection, it's kind of tricky, but it's quite straightforward as well, because you can just increase the frequency at which the bits are sent. All right? And that can be difficult, but it's just one wire, so it's quite manageable. Whereas if you're an engineer that needs to improve the transfer speed of a parallel connection with eight wires, that is going to be very difficult. Because now, not only do you have to increase the frequency, you also have to make sure that at that frequency, it's all of those bits are going to stay in sync, right? They have to arrive at the recipient at exactly the same moment so that the recipient can decode that into an A. And you can probably imagine that when the frequency is really high, that's going to get pretty difficult. If, if you're talking about nanoseconds or, or picoseconds, it's going to be such incredibly small amount of time and, and the timing needs to be exactly perfect, and otherwise it's not going to work. So it will be, in theory, a parallel connection is always better. But due to engineering reasons, it's much more difficult to increase the frequency of a parallel connection than it is to increase the frequency of a serial connection. And this is exactly what has happened in the world of computers, in, in the real world of computers. So first, parallel connections were better. But then at some point, serial connections started running at frequencies, started being able to run at frequencies that parallel connections couldn't do. And that frequency became higher and higher. And now we've come to the point where a serial connection can run at such an insane frequency that it actually beats a parallel connection. So for example, this cable, okay, this, this big bulky cable with all of its pins that it can use to transfer the data, this cable can transfer less data per second than this slim USB cable that I have right here. 
and then okay great this is faster not only is it faster also it only uses one wire for the data transfer so it's going to be very thin and very small and that's of course nice because this this takes up more space so that's why serial is superior but now there is one last thing you can do which is mixing them okay and this is interesting this is for example what PCI Express does mixing them means that you take serial connections and team them up and you might be wondering isn't that just a parallel connection no because these connections are independent they don't have to match up they don't the bits don't have to arrive at, at exactly the same moment they're independent serial connections that can run at insane frequencies independently did I already make that clear that they're independent <laughs> they're independent from each other and therefore they can run at really high frequencies and you don't have to worry about syncing it all up and this is what PCI Express does so in a PCI Express slot every lane is one wire that can transfer one bit at a time and then you just use more lanes so more serial connections for more data but they don't have to be in sync they're not a parallel connection they're just teamed up serial connections and that's a really clever idea well anyway now you know a little bit more about what serial and parallel connections are and why we use serial connections i hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.